Good evening and welcome back to Sport at Prime. In part two of our discussion with Springbok and Bulls fullback Warwick Kalant, the utility players told News from Africa that this is the time for SA Rugby to dominate the sport. Off the back of the Rugby Championship and the World Cup, Kalant believes that the Springboks have the talent to dominate for many years. You mentioned the international season, and I think that that will certainly be a, a big talking point, depending on how these various lockdowns go throughout the world. If New Zealand do get back onto the field, if Australia do get back onto the field and South Africa does not, do you feel that then when this does all come to an end and the international season hopefully kicks off with, with no problems, that South Africa might be slightly behind the pace because of the, the, the lack of opportunity to get back on and play rugby sooner than the rest? I mean, there's there's no doubt in it. I mean, if you're realistic, if that the only way you get better is by playing games. I mean, you can do as much home training and fitness if you want to, but if you're not match fit, if you're not conditioned in match situation, it will put you a bit behind. So, I mean, but we we know struggling in South Africa. We know how to conquer difficult situations. So it would just be another challenge that we have to face if the situation. Uh, get to that where we need to compete after they've been played rugby for two years or, or not two months, I mean, sorry. I know that a lot of players, Warwick, obviously take a lot out of the fans that are screaming and cheering for their, their team, for their favourite players, whether you're playing for a franchise or internationally. So the idea of playing rugby behind closed doors is a, is a concept that is being flirted with by many different sporting codes. If you were to get out onto the field and it would be forced to be played behind closed doors, how do you feel and you would adapt to that, being able to play in a, a silent stadium, not having the kids cheering your names, no songs, no stuff like that in the stadium. How do you feel you'd react to that as a player? I think it would be very, very difficult. I think it would come down to each player to have to go deep into their mental thoughts because, like I said, there's no home, home field advantage at all. There's no nothing of the fans supporting you, you know, the energy of the crowd. There's nothing. So it will literally come down to how you play how you want to execute the, the game plan and, and no win the game, I think, because it's going to be 15 against 15 on that field and literally no one else. You're going to hear each other's mm. threats all the time. You're going to hear each other talk all the words they want to say. So it's going to be interesting, actually. Have you guys had an opportunity to catch up a lot with Jake White? I know he kind of came in a difficult time. We spoke to him on our show not too long ago, and um, he himself is obviously trying to to find his feet during this rather unique time. So I'm not too sure how much communication you've had between yourself and, and he and the rest of the players. Has there been any word from him? Have there been any team meetings, any suggestions as to where we are going from here? What does the immediate future look like for the Bulls? Uh, there wasn't actually really a lot of one-on-one -on -one change. There was a few messages from the group of just about you know all the stuff that's happening at this moment, all about the speculations in the media. It was a segment. We can only control what we can control. So I think he just made it clear that he wants to strive for excellence. And he needs everyone to, to be mentally strong and, and in, in good physical shape when we get back. Um, so, yeah, it was just like a broader brief of, of what he wants and what he expects and where he's heading. Um, his main goal is, you know, to bring trophies to Loftus. And, and it was just something around that. Yeah. Nothing, nothing more personal or specific to each or any guy. Would you like to see Jake White as the new head coach? I think most probably, I think he has the authority to be the head coach. So um, it would be great. I mean, the experience and where, what he what he's achieved in the past I and mean, speak for itself. So it would be nice to, to be managed and coached by him. Okay, well, Eric, I want to thank you for your time. I want to wish you all the best for the, the Breaking Chains podcast. Continue bringing in the, the big names. Continue sharing those wonderfully positive messages, those inspiring messages for young South African kids who are uh, probably very desperate to have rugby back on their television screens to be able to watch their heroes again. And uh, we certainly do hope that all of this will come to an end very, very soon. And we can see you and your teammates and sports in general return to South Africa and allow us to continue celebrating the best of South African sport.